Hey, Matt Skinner here. Welcome to Matt Skinner TV. Today, we're going to talk about how do I underwrite a value add apartment deal? How do I, how do I take a, an older property and figure out how much I can afford to pay for the land or for the existing uh, dilapidated asset? So we're going to talk about that today. So first and foremost, what we're going to do on a, uh, to, to analyze a value add deal is the first thing we need to do is begin with the end in mind. Begin with the end in mind, write that down because this is the first thing we're gonna do. And so in multifamily or income property, we're gonna determine what the stabilized market value will be someday in the future after you do what's required to get it to its highest and best use. In other words, if, if, if the highest rents in the market, for example, are $2,000 a month, and this asset, because it's run down and kind of junky, is only running for $1,200 a month. So the question we need to ask ourselves the vi as the entrepreneur, as the visionary of what we're going to do here is, what do I need to do in order to get it from $1,200 a month to, to be an asset where people will pay $2,000 a month? How do I get it from what it is to what I need it to be? How do I get it from where it presently is to its highest and best use? Just like we ask that question about ourselves, don't we? Every single day, here's where I am today. How do I get myself to be better every single day? Well, how do I get there and create a map? We're gonna reverse engineer this for real estate just like we do in our personal lives. So the first thing we're gonna do is determine the stabilized market value of the asset. So to do that, what we're gonna do is determine what that highest rent rate will be. And we're gonna produce what the gross schedule uh, uh, gross scheduled rent will be someday in the future, right? So if all the units are now renting for $2,000 a month instead of $1,200 or $1 a month, and we total all of the units, that's gonna give us our gross scheduled rent. And then I'm going to multiply that uh, by 0.5. So I'm gonna cut it in half. I'm gonna leave half of the income to pay all the expenses. Expenses mean property management, property taxes, utilities, maintenance, uh, repairs, the pool guy, the exterminator, all the expenses. And then included in that, I always put in a special rainy day fund as, as, as an expense before we hit our net operating income. I put a little money aside every single month just in case we need to make some capital improvements to the assets. So we're gonna determine what our stabilized market value is by determining the future rents that we'll be getting after repairs. I'm gonna subtract half of that gross scheduled rent, and then I'm gonna multiply that by the market cap rate. Cap rates are just a function of the, of the specific markets that you're in. So if everything in your marketplace is trading at a six cap, you're just going to go ahead and use that, apply that to your net operating income to determine your stabilized market value. We have other videos on cap rates. If you got any questions about that, go check that out uh, here on YouTube or on our Facebook channel. But check that out, how cap rates work. So we're gonna take our gross scheduled rent, cut it in half, and then um, apply our cap rate to that to determine our stabilized market value. Now, inside of our stabilized market value, that's beginning with the end in mind. The next step we're gonna do is pay yourself first. You gotta ask yourself, how much do I deserve to make by doing all this work? I found the deal, I got the loan, I got my partners together to put some money in, and I went ahead and invested maybe a year or two of your life to put this whole process together, this whole project. Probably you invested in some kind of mentoring, some training, a consultant. A lot of you guys have hired me to come in and act as that consultant to help you put these deals together. You're gonna go ahead and determine what is it worth for all of that investment of time and effort and energy to go ahead and make your return on this. So let's say your stabilized market value might be $10 million, it might be $1 million. It doesn't matter for this conversation. Just wanna give you an example. So the stabilized market value is gonna be $10 million and you say to yourself, I need to make a 25% margin. And I'm gonna suggest that that's where you should probably be because that's, that's my threshold, that's my level of investment. I wanna make at least a 25% margin. So to determine that, I'm gonna take my stabilized market value, multiply it by 0.75, right? This is gonna put me at 7.5 million in this hypothetical deal scenario that we're talking about. Next thing I'm gonna do is go, okay, um, how much repairs costs are gonna be? What's my direct 
construction costs, my direct repair costs, and I'm going to add in any carrying costs, any negative cash flow that might occur while we're going through the construction process. So I'm just going to make up this number real quick and I'm going to say, man, this project, this $10 million stabilized market value property is going to require $2 million in repair work. So I'm going to subtract that, begin with the end in mind, pay yourself first, right? 2.5 million is the profit margin on this deal. I'm going to subtract the direct costs, what it's going to cost to get there. And in this particular case, that leaves me with 5.5 million is the most I can pay for this property. So if I so let's revert, let's talk about this in reverse. We just reverse engineered a value add deal. So here let's do this the other way. We buy the property for 5.5. We add $2 million in capital improvements to the asset, bringing our total, our, our total investment at 7.5. Now we're going to borrow a lot of this, right? We're going to get a construction loan. We're going to bank loan. We're going to have the bank help us out with this at very low interest rates. Good debt is good debt. We like good debt. 7.5 million uh, is our total investment at this point in time. And then when we're at 7.5 million all in with bank financing and our own money, our own capital contribution, we're going to be sitting on a $10 million asset, two and a half million in equity on this deal. So then we can go and we've got a couple of different options, right? We can go, we can sell it for 10 million and, and cash in, take our two and a half million out. Or we can go ahead and go to the bank with this new appraised value of 10 million, ask the bank for 75% financing and pull all of our initial capital investment out and go buy another deal. We call that compound equity. If you have not heard what compound equity is or how we utilize this in our investment strategy, go check it out. We have a whole uh, segment, a whole Matt Skinner TV segment on what compound equity is. You got to go check it out right now because it will change your life. It'll change your view on how we do real estate investing. Check it out, Matt Skinner TV. Thanks for joining us today.